In our previous video we have seen the different type of seismic arresters in bridge design. We shall now look at seismic arresters which act as both longitudinal and transverse seismic arresters. For better understanding, let us consider a pier flanked by two unequal spans in either direction. As you can see, the two spans are unequal in width. Hence, the longitudinal forces would be different from either of the spans. There are two spans, span 1 is 12 meters and span 2 is 15 meters in length. The longitudinal direction is along the traffic direction. These longitudinal forces are mainly due to the braking and traction force, the seismic forces in longitudinal direction, the temperature forces causing expansion and contraction. The transverse forces are those due to earthquake forces, wind effects, etc. These spans are pre-stressed box girders. Seismic arresters are sandwiched between two girders and made to absorb the impact of the longitudinal and transverse forces from both the spans. Now let us look at the pier cap in a bit more detail. The components of the pier arrangement are usually same for almost all pier types with girders. The directions in respect to the seismic arrestor are indicated here. The transverse and longitudinal faces of the arrestor are important when designing the type of arrestor as we shall see ahead. The dimensions of the seismic arrestor is based on the functionality. Whether the arrestor behaves as a corbel or behaves as a bending member is a matter of some calculation. The shape of the bearing may vary as per the type of bearing chosen. The bearing pedestal is usually designed to have a length of about 400 to 600 mm and a height of about 400 mm. Also note, the clearance from the bearing pedestal to the edge of the pier cap is usually kept between 150 to 200 mm. The horizontal forces from span 1 and span 2 are indicated in the longitudinal direction. The moment on the seismic arrestor is due to these forces. The seismic arrestor is designed for the governing moment. Now, to find the governing moment we will multiply the force with the lever arm. The lever arm is usually the same in most cases. Keep in mind that the lever arm zone is treated as the span of the member as we shall see ahead. The arrestor is treated as a member with a fixed bottom to the pier. This fixity helps us to understand the behavior of the member apart from other details. Such a member will have a very simple aligned diagram. We have a force acting on a fixed beam of uniform depth, at a distance equal to the shear span, causing a deflection delta at the top. Now, the length from the bottom of the member to the point of force impact is also called as the shear span. The depth of the member is used as depth D. In order to know the type of design required for the structure, the ratio of shear span to the depth must be calculated. The member is designed as a corbel if the value of this ratio is less than 0.6. Otherwise, it is designed as a bending member as many other beams. In our next video, we will deal with the detailed steps involved in calculating the reinforcement of the seismic arrestor. If you like the video, Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Stay tuned, only on The Bridge Hawk.